You have an understanding now of how a servlet works. The browser sends in a command, a get or a post command, and that command causes the creation of a request object and a response object, and they're used to call the do get or do post method. If you want, you can slip another program in front of the servlet. It's called a filter. This program has passed the request and response objects, and you can do things to their contents, both before and after the servlet does its thing. Here's an example of a filter. You create a filter class by implementing the filter interface. The init method is called first. It's called when the filter object is first being put into service. A filter config object is passed to it. If you're going to need that object, you'll need to save the address of it in a local reference because it doesn't come in again. Probably the most valuable thing you can do with a filter config object is get the servlet context object, which, among other things, supplies methods that give you access to the log file. At the end of the life of the filter, a call is made to its destroy method. This is so you can release any resources or do whatever cleanup otherwise might be necessary. This is the method that's called in place of the servlet method being called. That is, the chain of events that would normally cause a call to a do get method will instead call this method. Notice that it gets the same request and response objects that would have been passed to the servlet. This means that you can do things to them before you pass them on to the servlet. In this filter, an attribute is set in the request object. It's the text of an HTML body tag that sets the background color. Keeping it simple, that's all that this filter does. Now, this call to do filter makes a call to the appropriate servlet method and passes on the request and response objects. Now, there's a bit more to this than shows up here at first glance. For example, you can have more than one filter inserted in front of a servlet, and if that's the case, this call would simply call the next filter in line, which in turn would either call the next filter or call the servlet. Inside this code, you don't have to know which is being called or which position this is in the chain. Also, this do filter method can throw an exception. You can catch these in the filter if you prefer, if you have something to do with them, or you can throw them onto the caller. It's possible to use a try-catch block in this filter if you have something specific you need to do in case an exception is thrown. The servlet or the other filter or whatever will return here. In this example, the attribute is simply removed, but it's just for demonstration. There's no real need to remove it because the object is about to be deleted anyway. Here is a servlet that checks for the attributes having been added to the request object. The attribute itself is retrieved and stored as a local string object. The value of the attribute could be an object of any type, but in this example a string was used, so it would show up in the HTML. If the attribute string is found, it is used as the body tag in the HTML. If not, a regular body tag is used. We'll be able to tell whether the filter worked if there is some color in the background of the page when we look at it. One more thing. Here is the entry for the filter in the XML code. This is the definition of the filter and the specification of the name of its class file. This is how the filter is put in front of the servlet. The filter name and the servlet name appearing in this way will cause the filter to be executed first. You can enter any number of filters that come before the same servlet by naming the same servlet, and all the filters will be run first. The servlet itself is named in the normal way. Now, here's what the page looks like. You address the servlet just as you normally would, and the filter will be stuck in front of it because it's defined that way in the XML code. Here, let me show you. 
Here you see the color tag as it was constructed by the filter. Now this filter doesn't serve that much of a purpose. It was devised just to show you the mechanics of how things work. You can use a filter for authenticating a user, for logging things, compressing data, decompressing data, or even encrypting and decrypting information coming in from the browser, or information to be passed back to the browser.